Let's continue now by adding the ability to edit users within a role so that we can, for example, add more admins. So I just want to come down here, add another HTTP get, and I want to call this one edit users in role. I'm going to pass it a string ID. And I want to begin by getting the role. Uh, await role manager dot find by ID async and pass in the ID. Then I'm just going to put, put the view data of first the role ID to ID and then the role name equal to the role dot name like that and we want to check again and use this one if the role is null then we want to send the error message or send the user to the error page pass in the ID and now we're going to need a new view model so for this one I'm going to add a new class I'm going to name it user role view model and we want it to have the prop of string ID string name and a bool of is selected and we can just save that one and go back to our controller so now we want to create a model which will be a list of uh, user role mo view model and we want to loop over each user within the user manager dot users and in here for each user uh, user role view model you can name it user role EM equals to new and we want to pass it ID equals to user ID the name equals to user dot username and after this we're going to have an if statement so await user manager dot is in role async and we want to check the user and the role dot name so if the user ha is in this role we want the user role vm dot is selected to be true Otherwise, we want to set the is selected property of this one to false. And after that, we just want to add this to the model. And when all that's done, we want to return the view with the model. So what this one is doing is first of all we just get the role and then we pass to the view data the ID and the role name then we check if the role is null then we give the error page here we create a new model and the model here is a list of user role view model and 
what their user role view model is, is just we store the ID of a user. We also store the name of a user and we store whether it is or isn't in the role. So by doing that, we can display this later on using checkboxes. So here we pass the ID of the user, then the name of the user, and then the is selected property is evaluated down here. Now I can go ahead and add a view for this. Add an empty view, call it edit user in role, users in role, I think it is. And the model for this will be a list of uh, user role view model. We just need to import the using statement. And go ahead and add our own ID. and the role name to the data role name. Now we have that one. So then we can, we can create a form with the method post. And within here, I want to add a div and I want to have a h2 element with some margin on the bottom. I want to write edit users in role role name. And we can just add some quotation marks so we see it a bit more. Add another div. And within this one, I want to make a for loop. So int i equals to not zero. i less than model dot count count i increment and within here i'll put another div with a class of form check and a margin in the y axis of 1 close it uh, here we go and then I want to put a input of type hidden ASP4 at model of I dot ID. And we can close that one again. I don't know why it's not self closing. And uh, we can just copy this one and Put this one for name. And then I will have another input. Is P4. And this one will be for the model. Uh, sorry, at model of i dot is selected. And the class will be a form check input close this one off and I want to have a label the class of form check label ASP4, the same as this one. Uh, 
And within here, I will put the name. that and that one is finished so right here after the div after the for loop I'm gonna put a new div the class of my3 margin in the y-axis and here I want to have a button uh, ASP action will be edit role the ASP route ID will be at role ID class of BTN I want to have a BTN of warning and I'm gonna type in here Cancel. After that, I want to have the an input of type submit value of update and a class of BTN BTN success. And if I just go ahead and save this one now, now we can run our program just to see how it looks. So we go to the roles, go to the admin, and here I see that I have one role in here. It's the admin at site.com. If I click here, I will see this one. So edit users in role of admin. And here's the little checkbox. So what we want to do now is implement the functionality that if I uncheck this one this will disappear from the admin role and if it's unchecked and I do check it then it's going to be added to the admin role so this one doesn't do anything right now but I can go back with the cancel so let's implement the update button in here and for that we come back to the admin controller and we go down here and add a HTTP post and we call this one public async task by action result and we name it edit edit users in role and we want to pass it a list of user role view model model and a string of ID first we want to get the role await the role manager dot by the by ID I think perfect and then we want to just get our trusty old check here if the role is null we want to pass it to our custom error page Otherwise, we want to initiate a for loop to check all the model.count and we just begin by getting the user await user manager dot find by id async and we pass the model i of id with id. Right. So here we want to check if the model i um, nope, dot is selected and we want to check if it's not in the role. So await user manager dot is in role async. And we pass in the user and the role dot name. So if it is selected and is not in the current role, we want to add it to that role. 
then we just await user manager dot add to role async and add it. And the other way around. So if the just copy this one. If the model isn't selected and the the user is in the role, then we want to remove it from that role. So just await user manager dot remove from role async. Right. And if none of those match, then we just want to continue. And that could be the case, for example, if it's checked and already in the role, then we don't really care what happens to it. So then after all this is done, we just want to return, redirect to action. And we want to go to edit role. And we want to pass this a new ID equals to ID. So we can see that because this because the role edit role requires a string of ID, then we pass it the ID of the current role that we're editing. So we get back into the uh, role editing one. So that one's done now as well. And now we can go ahead and run our program and see how it looks. So if you come to the roles, go to the admin, go here. And if I remove myself from the admin and update, you can see that no users with admin role. Uh, and I can go in again and I can update. And now I'm admin again. So now you get a better understanding of what this function does here. So as you can see, now that this is checked, so it checks if it's checked and already in and not in the role. Uh, currently it is checked and it is in the role. So we'll just continue. But if I uncheck this, then we will go to this one because it's not selected and it is in the role. So then it will remove it from the roles list. And then if I update this, it's gone. And I can go back. And now that it's not in the role and is selected, then we will add it to the roles list instead. So now we are able to add roles, we're able to edit roles, and we are able to edit the users within that role. So our next step will be to add authorization to controllers so we can limit the access to some of the pages and controllers. So let's take a look at that in the next video.